So yeah, I am uh, basically trying to unpack, trying to pack the the impossible is what's happening. I know you've said this a bunch of times, but it's food first in the dry bag, and then clothes or clothes and food. Clothes first. Clothes first. Yeah. Okay. What's going on? Welcome to episode 49, my nine, mm, boy, my epic nine day backpacking gear list. Uh, I have all this crap set out. The first, the first thing I gotta do is give a hand to all the people that do these backpacking what I bring videos because what sucks is unpacking all this crap and lay it out nicely just like the backpacking videos. Yeah, let's get this bad boy going. The reason I'm doing this video is one, I don't know why, but I'm obsessed with the backpacking gear review, uh, what I take with me videos. I don't know why I can't stop watching them, but there's a lot of videos where they're sitting there weighing all the little pieces of everything, I'm not gonna do that crap. Uh, so I'm about ready to upload this mega, mega 20 episode Utah trip that I went on. It was actually a sponsored trip. I was able to get a bunch of companies to actually pay us uh, and showcase some of their products on the trips. I've never really done any of these videos before, so I'm gonna do my best to kind of like show you some of the stuff that I use. People have different ways of showing all their gear and I am going to break it down into sections. Let's go into bag. So first things first, the pack. This is the Osprey Atmos 50 liter pack. This pack is not cheap. This retails for about $260. Pretty hefty for a, um, man, this is not gonna be good going back. And, so it's not a light pack in any way, but as far as weight load, oh man, this thing is comfortable. Let's take a look at the suspension system. Call this the anti-gravity system. The reason they call it this is because of these extra insane waist belts. It just wraps around your body. This suspension system gets amazing airflow. These waist traps can be adjusted, they can be pulled, and you can adjust the length like so. That alone is a great feature. These are completely adjustable. It's comfortable for about 40 pounds. I was probably rocking about 65 pounds after I put all the camera gear on. My pack is heavy as f is all I can say. F***ing heavy. So I needed a very lightweight day pack. This is the Climate Airframe. This has an amazing little trick to it. Uh, it comes with a little pump on the shoulder. And look what's happening. Look at that. The pack is actually filling up with air. How awesome is that? What I was looking for was ultimate protection for my camera gear. Dust proof, sand proof. Again, when you take a regular backpack to the beach, no matter how careful you are with it, there still ends up being sand in that thing. So this is about 80 bucks. So for the main part of the backpack, I wanted to make sure, again, it's not waterproof in any way. So I got this. Sea to Summit 35 liter dry bag. Getting one of these, a lot of people would just take a trash can liner, a trash bag and put it in their backpack, but I didn't want to risk it being ripped or anything. Sea to Summit 35 liter, it's awesome. So next item, which is kind of an odd thing that you would bring, one pillowcase. It makes a great laundry bag. I could take this out and I could put all my clothes in it, uh, including my puffy jacket when I go to sleep at night, and I almost had a full-size pillow. Okay, so now let's go into sleep systems. There are a lot of great one-person tents, but I cannot afford a four or five hundred dollar ultralight backpacking tent. I was able to get this amazing Eureka Spitfire. Uh, I believe this is the version one. It comes in a little over two pounds. I got this tent 
for about 40 bucks on Craigslist. I could not fit my backpack inside the tent with me. It's that small, but that's the tent that I use. Second was a sleeping pad. This thing, as far as size go, is awesome. This is the X-Wave. This is the sleeping pad. Look how small that is. It's great. And I'll actually pull it out for you. Except it just rolls out like this. You need it pumped up so hard to not be like feeling the ground that it's just hard. It's a hard thing to sleep on. It's not foam, it's just hard air. And these baffles are just not that comfortable. If it's for like maybe one or two nights, it's great. But for nine days, uh, was not comfortable. I'll be honest, I think this thing would be more, would be better for like a hammock sleeping than directly on the ground. And so last was my sleeping bag. Look at this thing, look how Look how tiny this thing is. This I was able to get for about a hundred bucks on uh, Amazon. This is an 800 fill three season sleeping bag. And again, the day that we got out there to Coyote Gulch, it was snowing. I can't say enough good things about it. This is a envelope shaped sleeping bag. So it's great. It's, it's great for a blanket. It zips up into a regular sleeping bag. I cannot stand mummy sleeping bags. I cannot stand to just be like, mm. I was extremely, extremely comfy in this thing. Now, let's move on to the clothes. Comfort and staying warm was my main concern. Uh, let's first start off with uh, the jacket. After about a week of searching online and seeing these jackets that were over $100, and again, it's just thin material. Uh, I didn't understand why it was so expensive. So again, I highly suggest going out and looking uh, at thrift stores because a lot of these buyers don't really know what ultralight camping clothes are. I found this amazing North Face jacket. Guess how much I got this for? Eight dollars. Talk about a score. I could have spent a hundred dollars on a jacket. I got this for eight dollars. Only thing I don't like about down jackets is that they just, the cheaper ones look really goofy on people. I found a website called Light in the Box. I found this amazing puffy jacket. This company is called High Rock. Look how small that I packed down to. Dude, this jacket is sick. It is so comfortable. The cut like forms to the body. I gotta say, this thing is so warm. This is my all around jacket. This will be my snowboard jacket. Every the main thing I wanted to make sure I took care of is making sure I had a warm base layer. Main thing is I went out and I got these sexy, uh, these are basically just spandex like workout. These were great for walking in the river with. I could have these uh, underneath my like river shorts. Not very fashionable, but it kept me very warm while we we're out there. Again, I just brought two pairs of shorts. One pair of shorts just for uh, water and one pair of shorts, uh, cargo shorts, just for hiking. I was able to just kind of like wash them out in the river each day and hang them up. And then one pair of sweatpants. And again, too, this was just for lounging around at camp and also sleeping in. I don't really like wearing jeans. I think they're heavy and very restrictive. Two pairs of spandex underwear, which again, too, you can just wash them out in the river. For the tops, uh, same thing. Uh, just making sure I had my main base layer. So for my top, called a cold proof uh, base layer. These are essentially meant for skiing, snowboarding, but again, having one really thin, warm base layer that you could kind of like add to uh, is the smartest thing. One tank top, two t-shirts, one beanie. This is just a nice thin H&M beanie I got. It was like 15 bucks. These are called the wigwams. I do have to say these are probably the most comfortable socks I've ever worn, especially for hiking. I can highly, highly suggest these bad boys. These are the Solomon Speed Cross. I think they're called the Speed Cross 3. After that second day, we had to make a fire and I burned, I burned the crap out of these things. So Adidas actually makes these, these Climacool boat shoes. And these are a cool de design, it's almost all mesh. And you can kind of see there are all these holes already pre-drilled into the shoe. These are the NRS Hydro Skin 
gloves. There's not many gloves out there that keep you warm enough that you can still function using a camera. These things, holy cow, man. They are a tight fit, and man, you feel like freaking Spider-Man. Look how awesome these gloves are. Look at that. Literally, I had no problem using my camera, changing lenses, flying the drone. I think they're about 30 bucks. My favorite pair of gloves I've ever bought. Let's move on to lights. This headlamp, which is obviously just absolutely overkill, and it takes these ridiculous batteries. This headlamp is called the Skywolf. It has three regular LED lights and two blue lights on the bottom. The light's awesome, but this is like a, a one night, if you don't worry about weight, headlamp. Because this went out on me on like the third night. And it doesn't even like start dimming or anything to let you know it's running out of battery and preserve it. It just shuts off. And then I also brought this little one. I don't know the name of it exactly, but it's this really small portable LED light. Now my most favorite light is this Lucy light. Uh, I love this light so much, I bought one for every single person going on this camping trip. Boom! You blow it up, and it has a solar panel on the back of it. Bam! You got light. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome lamp. Okay, I find this really funny because people get really into their, their food prep for their camping trip. The number one thing I brought for my main cooking system is this BioLite stove. This thing is freaking heavy. This is not a backcountry camping ultralight cook system. You can get the little stoves that are like this big. All it is, this is, is basically a fan that uh, goes inside here. You turn this fan on and it starts circulating the heat just using sticks, twigs, stuff like that to get this thing burning. And you're able to boil water in about less than five minutes, I would say. You weren't allowed to have campfires at any of the places that we're camping in the back country. I decided to bring this along so that we could have a little mini campfire, essentially something when we were out in the middle of nowhere, and this thing was perfect for it. Since most of the stuff that we were cooking was gonna be freeze-dried food, most of these take two, two cups of water. I was able to just get this little GSI cooking cup, and then I got the Sea to Summit. I think this one's the X mug, so don't get the X cup, because that's literally what it is. It's like a small kid's like cup. The X mug is a lot bigger, super portable. I was able to use it as a cup, as a bowl, I could drink coffee out of it. Just got, I think this is a GSI as well too, just this like titanium plate. These are great, super light. The one thing that I didn't have on me because I lost it, and it's a really good idea, is actually bringing a mini Frisbee. You have something to play with. It was great for actually clearing out brush wherever I was gonna put my tent. It was a great water collector. Uh, now for eating, I had bought this little two-in-one uh, spoon fork combo. These are kind of useless. Uh, it's just really hard to eat with a fork like this. And I didn't really use it that much. What I did end up using is I brought a pair of these chopsticks. Super light, super portable, and again too, even if you don't have regular chopsticks, you could just cut some while you're out camping. You know, a bear comes, you could get it in the jugular with this. Thing. The Backpackers Pantry are great. Packet Gourmet actually came out with some really good stuff. They even have this thing called the uh, All-American Cheeseburger. For breakfast, same thing. You can get the uh, dehydrated uh, omelet mixes. Oatmeal is great. Dried fruit that you can put into it. And then as far as lunches go, pita bread, tuna. You can get chicken, salmon now. Peanut butter and jelly is great. These little uh, skippy peanut butter packets, trail bars are great, uh, mini cookies, stuff like this, uh, gummy bears, lollipops, these are also really great to bring along. Little macaroni and cheese containers also, again, like these are great because you can just cook it inside this. A great idea is to get these little water enhancers and just add it to your water bottle. The little packets of lemonade, the vitamin C's are great. And then for coffee, the Starbucks little mini roasts. 
Anything other than just plain water is great. That's basically it, guys. But yeah, I've always wanted to do one of those review videos. If you have any questions on any of the items that I showed you, feel free to ask and let me know. I appreciate all you guys that have been subscribing and watching the videos. Uh, I am about ready to drop 20 episodes of our amazing trip out to Utah. And I will see you on the next episode. Here we go. Here we go. It's just, it's 50 liters, man. All that, yeah. I just, I'm so scared. I don't think it's going to fit. I don't think it's going to fit. I'm going to have to cut this down a lot. A lot, man.